Hi, my name is Elliot Dockstader Wynn. Today we're going to be reading Caribou Song by Thompson Highway. Thompson Highway is an Aboriginal writer best known for his plays and novels. This is his first children's book. The illustrations are done by Brian Deans. Caribou Song by Thompson Highway. Joe and Cody lived with their mama, their papa, and Cody's black dog, Utsi. They lived too far north for most trees. Most of the year, the lakes and islands and rivers and hills were covered in snow. All year long, they followed the caribou with a sled pulled by eight huskies. Mush! Papa would yell, and the dogs would run straight forward. Cha! He would shout, and they would turn right. And when he yelled, you! they turned left. Joe played the accordion, the katuchigan. From morning to night, he played and sang, Atih, Atih, Astum, Astum, yo ho, ho! Caribou, caribou, come, come, yo ah, ho, ho. And from morning to night, Cody danced. He danced on the rocks. He danced on the ice. He even danced under the full silver moon. One day, at the end of May, the family stopped on an island. After a lunch of whitefish and bannock, Joe and Cody wandered off and found a meadow surrounded by forest. In the middle stood a great big rock. Cody, said Joe. This is the perfect spot. Let's sing and dance for the caribou. You dance with your arms up like antlers. I'll sing Hatik Hatik and play Katuchigan. And before you know it, 10,000 caribou will burst out of the forest. So Cody raised his arms to look like antlers and began to dance. He lifted his left moccasin, then his right, then his left, then oh! There he was, flat on a tuft of pillow-soft caribou moss, poking through the melting snow. Atih, atih, ashtam, ashtam. Joe played and sang as Cody got up and danced like a young caribou. They were so busy dancing and singing and playing Katushigan that they didn't hear the rumbling. Mama and Papa were sitting near the fire, drinking tea. Thunder? Mama asked Papa. In May? Can't be, said Papa. Not until summer. Then what can it... But Mama never finished her question. Faster than lightning, a thousand caribou burst from the forest. Two thousand caribou ran between the cooking fire and the boys. Ten thousand caribou filled the meadow like a lake. Joe stood in the middle of the plunging caribou. Through the tangle of the rushing legs and antlers, he could just see Cody as small as a doll sitting on the caribou moss. Joe took one step, then another, as if swimming through the snorting, steaming bodies until he reached his brother. When he took Cody's hand, they seemed to float right through the herd. The next thing they knew, they were perched on the big rock, Cody on Joe's lap, Katuchigan between them. All they could see were antlers. All they could hear were hooves, drumming all around them like thunder. Atik, atik, ashtam, ashtam, Joe sang again. Caribou, caribou, come, come. And out of the drumming came the voice of the herd, whispering and moaning and wailing as it flowed past the rock. Cody, Joe, it said, come, come. And the boys opened their arms to embrace the spirit. When the river of caribou had become a trickle, the brothers heard another wailing sound. Mama's face was buried in Papa's parka. Utsi danced around the great big rock. Ho ho, Papa sang out. But when Mama looked up at Papa's face, she didn't see tears, but a smile as bright as the sun. For there, atop the large rock, sat Joe and Cody, laughing and laughing and laughing. The end. Thanks for listening.